Hi, we'll just do a quick review here of uh, westward expansion and interactions with Native Americans and uh, basically the second half of the 1800s here. And, uh, well, uh, why are there so much pressure on Native Americans? Well, for starters, you know, the movement east, you know, manifest destiny. Um, some particular events that causes more movement west of um, Americans uh, of European backgrounds are, look, California, the gold rush, 1849, remember San Francisco 49ers, um, the big gold rush out there, a lot of people start moving out to California, you know, going on the, uh, you know, the Overland Trail, the, the Bozeman Trail, um, draws a lot of people out there, and of course there's other um, events too, in the 1850s you have uh, um, Comstock Lode, you know, down in uh, Virginia City, Nevada, you know, people go out and getting silver out of there. Um, the Homestead Act, 1862. Um, Abraham Lincoln and his presidency has um, basically, you know, you can you can work the land for five years, and then the land will be yours. You don't have to pay a you know you don't have to pay a dime for it. But at that point, you have to start paying taxes on it. You have to work it for five years. Um, and it's a good chunk of land, uh, 160 acres. Um, you know, it's 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 open to to men including uh, uh, free black men in 1862. Um, so you, you start to see more and more people move west and search for farms and search for hitting it, you know, uh, rich quick. Um, and so they start uh, putting a lot of Native Americans on um, reservations um, to, to contain them to, so they can use more, so that we can use more land. Um, at the same time, um, you see, uh, you see, uh, as Native American tribes get pushed westward, there's more conflict oftentimes between various tribes as there's, as land becomes more scarce and resources become more scarce. Um, the government tries to handle this by basically just imposing uh, Euro-American culture on Native Americans. Um, forcing it on them, taking away from their culture. I mean, especially out in the Great Plains, you know, if, if your way of life is following buffalo and following the herds, um, and you want to be doing things like farming, uh, you can't have that. I mean, it's just, the, it's just two economies, two ways of life, two cultures that, um, you know, are, are hard to coexist in the exact same uh, location. And so the government just simply wants to eradicate that culture. And you can see that with the Dull Severity Act. Even when they put Native Americans on reservations, they start to say, well, you can't use the land how you want to use it. Uh, you can't just use it tribally. You have to use it cut up by family units. You know, this 160 acres, you know, this is your family units. And you are to farm it. And it's to encourage uh, Native Americans to adopt more American-style farms. Um, you farm this land. This is your family unit's land. Um, don't use it tribally. And one thing to kind of point out too is um, a lot of these uh, reservations, I mean, it's just a doomed policy to begin with. You're, you're taking Native Americans, uh, many of which would never farmed before, uh, you know, if, especially if you're talking like the Plains, uh, the Plains tribes, you know, that follow the buffalo. And, you know, you, you don't farm, and then you're said you have to farm. But, oh, by the way, your reservation is going to be in land that's poor farming land because uh, none, of the, uh, none of our westward expansion, you know, American settlers wanted it. That's why we're giving it to you. Places, I mean, Oklahoma was originally Indian territory. Well, that was a hard to farm back then without modern irrigation and so forth. Um, so the reservation system is almost, I mean, it really is set up to fail. And it's set up to impose culture. Uh, Euro-American Euro culture and the Native Americans. At the same time, you look here at the Carlisle Indian School. Um, and there are other, this is the most famous one, but there's, there's several other ones uh, across the nation. But they, they, it's a boarding, it's a boarding school. They take young Native Americans away from their families, ship them to the Carlisle Indian School over in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which is like in South Central Pennsylvania. And basically, uh, you know, you're going to learn English, you're going to dress like Euro-Americans, you're going to behave like us, hairstyles like us, and you could get punished if you speak in your native language, English only. And so you look at this here, and you know, it's a lot of these kids are under high stress, depressed, away from their parents, far, far, far away. Um, and you know, if, if you're a Native American taken from, you know, maybe the Great Plains all the way to Carlisle Indian School, 
you look at that, that's a long ways away, especially in an age without telephones, cell phones, etc. Um, some of these kids even commit suicide. A lot of these kids are depressed. And it, you see it's open for a good chunk of time there, 1879 to 1918, um, until it's shut down. Here are some other examples of conflicts. So we kind of see what the government's doing to encourage people to move out west and encourage Native Americans or force Native Americans to uh, basically abandon their culture, adopt Euro-American culture. But um, one ex event here is the Sand Creek Massacre, 1864, out in Colorado. Um, at the very, very tail end of the, of the U.S. Civil War, there had been some uh, uh, dog soldiers, is what they were called, um, Native American uh, uh, men who had been uh, raiding white settlements and so forth. Well, uh, Black Kettle's uh, uh, people, they, they show up uh, at, at a, uh, outside of a fort and basically say, you know, that's not us. We're here peacefully. They're flying the U.S. flag. They, they even agree to, to, to live where, they're, where, the, uh, where the soldiers want them to. But then Chivington comes and other soldier groups, and basically his men are drunk and then get drunk all night in the morning. They basically go out and massacre uh, the people. A lot of their warriors had, were actually out hunting at the time. Uh, a huge tragedy. Um, if, a couple people, including Silas Soul, ordered their uh, men to stand down and not follow Chivington's orders. Um, and unfortunately, though, the damage is already done. Uh, Chivington uh, is investigated. Soul gets murdered uh, when he's supposed to testify in Denver uh, about this. The investigation makes recommendations to uh, uh, basically uh, punish Chivington, and then he's never actually punished. Uh, so the guy who perpetrates this act, the guy who commands the act, uh, gets away with it. Uh, another event is the Little Bighorn, uh, the Battle of Little Bighorn, out in the uh, southeast Montana. Um, it's part of this Great Sioux War, you know, that uh, sometimes called the Black Hills Wars, um, over like this very valuable area in the Dakotas. Um, basically, the Sioux had been promised this land and uh, had the land, and then people found the gold on it and then started making you know, trails through uh, their reservation to connect mining towns. Some of the mines were in the reservation. And so, you know, they had been pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, promised uh, the Black Hills forever. And then now they realize we're probably gonna lose it. So that starts this great Sioux War to try to keep what they have. And the Little Bighorn, Battle of the Little Bighorn is um, probably the most prominent action of, of uh, the Great Sioux War. And um, basically, to make a long story short, um, uh, Custer, as we all know, uh, leaves behind re some reinforcements. He leaves behind these uh, 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 Hotchkiss guns um, and attacks a much larger force. And his men are essentially that are with him are wiped out. Uh, however, um, the native this is considered the Native Americans' biggest victory against the U.S. Army. Uh, in this case, the Seventh Cavalry, but the U.S. Army overall. But um, if, but it gets a re uh, there's more of a refocus on the army back to putting Native Americans on the reservations, pushing them off lands and etc. And so this is a, a victory that's very 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 short lived um, for the Sioux. Uh, another example of uh, tragedies are uh, Wounded Knee, 1890. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, an abomination and and just. Uh, uh, horrifically, uh, 20 different U.S. soldiers were given uh, uh, Congressional Medals of Honors uh, for basically their actions at Wounded Knee, which was primarily just massacring uh, civilians, innocent people. Uh, and essentially, uh, the, uh, the tribe had already agreed basically to uh, uh, go on a reservation, but the Army wanted to uh, de-arm them, take away their guns. Uh, they didn't believe that Native Americans gave them all their guns because they just gave them a few rusty old guns. So they, they go through the, uh, the camp um, looking for guns and uh, the ghost dance starts. Uh, uh, some people claim that there's a uh, Native American who, who can't hear and uh, gets into a wrestling match over a soldier for the gun. Uh, somebody fires, we don't really know who, and then the Hotchkiss guns open up around uh, the encampment here at Wounded Knee, uh, killing many, many people. Most of the soldiers, my understanding is, that died actually died from friendly fire. 
Uh, but this is seen as a huge tragedy today. But unfortunately, at the time, um, a, quite a few people uh, were proud of this, and you know, this is this is what needs to be done. And and, and Custer is revenge, and, and that kind of talk. Uh, well, Volko was a Native American. He actually uh, spent much of his uh, early life being raised by a by a white preacher, and he has this religious religious thing, the ghost dance, and it's kind of like a mixture, a blend of uh, Native American religion with Christianity. And Volka, he's also a magician and does magician tricks and stuff like that, um, which gives him more authority with his people. But uh, the ghost dance, um, basically, uh, if you're wearing the ghost dance shirt and doing the ghost dance, um, you know, your shirt is bulletproof, you're, you're basically safe from bullets. And uh, Wovoka teaches that, you know, um, basically Jesus will come back and make the Americas like it was before 1492, before Columbus, that the, the white man will you know, be wiped into the ocean, the buffalo herds will be fully restored, and the land will be free and open again. And, um, and uh, this had actually been banned by, you know, and uh, the soldiers were to, to stop Native Americans from doing uh, the ghost dance. Um, Chief Joseph, a uh, 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 leader of the Nez Pierce, which means uh, pierced noses, um, he's uh, basically f forced to be on a reservation. He flees, he fights, he flees, he fights, and he's trying to flee to Canada to just escape the U.S. Army, to, to get the army off his back where, you know, the army can't chase him into Canada. And, um, and he's captured less than 40 miles from the Canadian border, and he gives this... Uh, you know this this famous um, he gives, he puts out these famous words um, you know you know uh, about all the, uh, how all of his people have died and how he's you know they're fighting for freedom and their way of life but he will fight no more forever he even got to meet the the president and, and tried to encourage the president to, uh, on his people's behalf um, but to really no good avail um, and finally uh, Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt Jackson uh, writes a book called A Century of Dishonor in uh, 1881 and um, basically chronicling uh, the United States government's and really the American people's uh, actions as you know dishonorable what's going on here how they're forced off land pushed off lands treated cruelly um, and um, and so this is a um, you know a good example of uh, someone critiquing uh, US policy at the time um, and she wasn't in the majority really uh, you know most people believed that you know what we were doing uh, was right at the time but there's just a real quick super quick gloss over just to refresh your mind for the AP exam here uh, hope it helped